Good morning everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, you find me today on the site of Plesley Country Park and you've probably just been looking at some nice pictures and images of Plesley Pit which is a bit of a working museum. And what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take the Teversal Trail but only for a short distance so we're not heading off towards Teversal and West Houses. We're going to branch off on what is now the Rowthorn Trail where eventually we'll come across what was Rowthorn Tunnel and this has been infilled for a good, good many number of years. We'll then go through Dolly, which will then take us towards where Glatwell Colliery was and then after that you've got the site of Ramfort Colliery and then we'll end up exactly where we finished off on one of our previous videos at Bolsover Colliery. So let's go see what we can find. It's a nice little walk down here I believe, I've never done it before. We'll have a look around and enjoy the sights together. Although this station was not on the route of our journey today toward Bolsover, I found this beautiful image of Plesley East Station. Now this was on the former line between Nottingham and Sheffield, but I still wanted to give it a mention. Now this station originally opened on the 1st of November 1901 by the name of Plesley. It closed the timetable passenger traffic on the 14th of September 1931 and continued to be used for goods up until the 2nd of October 1963 and officially closed five days later. So we're about to cross over Batley Lane. So it's a nice little bridge that's been put in for the path. And there's a bridge for the other railway line just there, which would have headed off towards Glatwell. And in that direction, extremely sunny over there, that head off towards Skegby. All right, let's carry on. So up there, that's the bridge we just crossed over. So. Heading back that way, we're heading off towards Teversal. That's where we just come from. And here's the other bridge. And it's supporting our walls for the line towards Rowthorn Tunnel, Dolly, and Glatwell. So the direction we're going is that way. So this line was opened way back in 1890, so almost 130 years ago, which feels pretty recent in terms of the age of some railways. It only lasted until 1930, I believe, um, the month of July. And um, the line itself ran between Mansfield and over towards Chesterfield and served, obviously, Presley Pit there's the Rowthorn Tunnel further down, which I'm hoping to get near. So the embankment at this point is extremely high. It's similar to sections of the Skegby Trail between Plesley and Sutton and Ashfield. Right down there, there's a load of cows in a field and they look like miniature models. And the Teversal Trail is over in that direction. And one day we will, we will crack on and get on with that one. I have to say, it's absolutely beautiful down here. All I can hear is birds. There's a stream trickling along down there with a peculiar name I believe it's called the Merrill Sick so that's a bit of a oddball name that one uh, there's no frost down here but there was this morning when I started off so I'm going to continue on I mean other than nature there's been nothing really railway related to look at but we'll keep an eye out I've managed to come across a few wooden sleepers, a bit of a gap and then there's a number of them one after the other. That's really good. So the track obviously would have gone a little way over to about this width just here for the single track. And you do continue on for some way. 
Mm. Yeah, there's more. Excellent. So at this stage there used to be a bridge and it looks like it's farm access. And the the little pathway down is absolutely riddled with the bricks of what once stood here. So there's a mixture of blue and red brick in there. And we go down the bottom over a muddy little stream and bricks again and back up the other side. Now the course of this track bed is going to take a bit of a sharp trajectory change. As we go a little further down here, it's going to take a sharp turn to the right and head off towards Dolly and Rowthorn Tunnel. And we'll be leaving the Teversal Trail behind, which is just over there. It's probably about a, less than a quarter of a mile away to that side. I'm looking forward to doing that one. There's quite a bit of history down there towards West Houses and Teversal. And on the 1st of September 1890, there was a station on this site and it was known as Rowthorn and Hardwick. And it only lasted until July 1930. So, you know, that fits in with the date of the line being, being closed. And just here, we've still got what may well be parts of the old platform edge or some kind of building. It's not a platform edge as such on this side because of the brickwork but I think if we walk over here we could potentially be on the old platform as it drops down just there and if it wasn't a platform it was certainly some kind of foundations to do with the station Images of Rowthorn and Hardwick Station have been absolutely impossible to come by. I've searched high and low, so the best I can do is show you an overhead old map from the early 1900s which shows its location. This station itself only had a single platform as it was a single track and also had a little siding which probably maybe also had a little platform for goods or even a shed. So upon arrival at Rowthorn, I've got to take a bit of a diversion now because it's just farmland and fields with no public right of way as far as I can tell or see. So we've got about a two mile walk around, so I'll see you when we get to the other end. Now Rowthorn Tunnel, this was a single track tunnel, 929 yards in length, so that's 849 metres. Now it had a northern approach gradient of 1 in 50, which continued throughout the tunnel, so this made it extremely difficult to work coal trains in a southerly direction. Two interesting side notes after closure, the tunnel was previously used as a mushroom farm and later used as a Second World War ammunition store. Since then it has now been filled in. Okay, I'm now back on the other side of Dolly. So that's where the line would have come from. So that's the A617 between Mansfield and Chesterfield. We've now got a very grassy and squidgy looking for the track bed. Now Glatwell also had its own station. And it opened a little later than the previous one of Rowthorn and Hardwick, uh, 1892 but it did have the same year of closure 
back in 1930 so an even shorter lifespan than our previous station visited today so glatwell station that was another one which had a really really short lifespan it provided a service of three trains each way per day between mansfield and chesterfield and the journey time was basically around about an hour so that's six trains a day past glatwell station now the railway itself was not lifted until 1978 along this section so that's four years after glatwell colliery closed back in 1974 To our left, there was once uh, a brickworks just there, immediately preceded by Glatwell Colliery, which we'll be passing alongside next. So I've decided to come a little way up, which I believe is part of the Glatwell Colliery uh, spoil heap. The track bed's down there, a little green line you can see. It's very boggy and wet. So I'm going to follow this a little way. Hopefully, the the old route will get a little firmer again. So back on the track bed again. I've navigated around uh, Glatwell colliery spoil heaps. That is the Stockley Brook that you've just been looking at. It's pretty swollen really because we've had a hell of a lot of rain. So pretty pleased that we've managed to grab this uh, window of sunniness today. I've now got the Stockley Brook on my left. And over in that direction, we would have had a Ramcroft Colliery. Our walk today has brought us along there, over that way in the direction of Bolsover, but we've stepped away from that a moment and we've come across this little field and this stile and it's brought us on to the track bed of the former Ramcroft Colliery. So in that direction was Ramcroft Colliery. Ramcroft Colliery, now that opened way back in 1916, so at this time 103 years ago. It carried on production up until 1966. There was a period where the mine was mothballed. Now this was 1929 through till 1939, so a 10 year period. There was members of staff, around about three of them, which kept the mine, you know, un it was kept looked after. Now the reason the mine reopened was 1939, or in the period of the Second World War, demand would have increased and production again started until the mine's closure. So we'll take a little wander up here, we're not going to go far. It's uh, pretty overgrown as you can expect from a line that's been closed for over 50 years. But every disused railway as we find them deserves an inclusion in these walks. Right, I think that's probably about as far as I'm going to go. See, it all looks pretty much the same. So, we're going to turn about, head back towards the junction with the line, the Stockley Trail line that we're walking on today. Not sure what the junction's called. Um, I did a little research on it and I couldn't find a name for it. So, for, for, the, for the you know purpose of this video, we'll call it Ramcroft Colliery Junction.
by the Stockley Trail. The route continues, which I expect probably follows the former LDECR. That's one I need to look into. I've already done little bits of it, like Spinkill Tunnel and uh, Fledborough and Fledborough Viaduct. I'm going to get the bike out one day and carry on past Fedborough and go all the way to the other end. But this end might be worth looking into a bit more. So I know a lot of it's missing and gone. But it'd be interesting to see what we can pick up. So at this point, I now find myself next to the site of the former Bolsover Colliery and heading in the direction of Colite and Markham and Poulsbrook. So now we've come from one end a couple of months ago, if you've seen that video, I'll put it up there if you haven't. And now we've come from Plesley and got to exactly the same point. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's been really nice. There's not been a lot of railway stuff to look at, but there's quite a bit of historical locations along the route. And I hope you've enjoyed um, learning about that just as much as I have. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe below, because there's plenty more to come around this area, especially as I say, we've got the Teversal Trail to do, Oxcroft, Creswell Clown, many, many more. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye.